Gujral. You spoke seven minutes, Sri Naresh Gujral. So, during the last two days, one has witnessed a virtual race to usurp Dr. Ambedkar's legacy by various political parties. Sir, his legacy cannot be appropriated by any party or any community. Each and every Indian who values justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity is the inheritor of his legacy. Sir, apart from being a great legal luminary, Dr. Ambedkar was a visionary social reformer whose monumental work continues to shape and protect the rights of our countrymen, especially the weak and the deprived. Sir, I want to bring a very interesting uh, fact to the notice of this house. In the 30s, Dr. Ambedkar spent a few years in Punjab. And he was so influenced by Sikhism and the teaching of our gurus that he publicly announced that he was thinking of embracing Sikhism. At that stage, in August of 1936, he sent his son, his nephew, and 13 followers to Amritsar to work out the modalities of his conversion. The 13 followers immediately converted to Sikhism, but the son and the nephew came back, and thereafter, it is well recorded in history how important leaders persuaded Dr. Ambedkar not to embrace Sikhism. But, sir, that is the reason, perhaps, why the philosophy of the Holy Granth Sahib of equality, brotherhood, tolerance, and respect for all religions permeates through our Constitution. Sir, when we celebrate our Constitution, we naturally salute those freedom fighters who sacrifice their lives, their youth, their freedom so that future generations could breathe free. I feel fortunate to represent a community that made the greatest sacrifices for the freedom of our country. As early as 1849, before the so-called first war of India's independence in 1857, Sikh forces led by Sham Singh Atariwala fought the imperial forces. In fact, that was the first war of independence. Thereafter, the Kuka movement, organized by the Namdhari Guru, Baba Ram Singh Ji, that was the first civil disobedience movement, even before Mahatma Gandhi's civil disobedience movement. Yeah. Sir, the Gurdwara reform movement, where the British yielded to the pressure from the Sikhs, and for which even Pandit Nehru quoted arrest, was hailed as the first victory of our freedom movement by none other than the father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah. Sir, the aftermath of the Jallianwala Bagh, the struggle of the Babar Akalis, the Ghadar movement, and the valor of the young men like Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev, and Rajguru shook the very foundations of the British Empire. Mahatma Gandhi, Pandit Nehru, Subhash Chandra Bose, Mulana Azad, Sadar Patel, Rajinder Prashad, and many other freedom fighters, commitment, sacrifices, and leadership ensured the country attaining the, our freedom and then our constitution under the guidance of Baba Sahib. Sir, after the independence, the first challenge that came to our constitution was faced in 1975 when emergency was imposed. Yeah. Yeah. The, all fundamental rights were suspended and the media was gagged. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, at that juncture, Sikhs again stood up. All our senior leaders, mind you, they were not arrested. They voluntarily went to jail and they announced from Amritsar that every single day of the emergency, 
one jatha of Sikhs will court arrest. And they continue to do that for 19 months. Sir, the House perhaps does not know that of all the political prisoners who were taken in during the emergency, more than two-thirds were Sikhs and Punjabis. We are proud of that. Sir, it is widely known that in 1984, after the assassination of Mrs. Gandhi, how thousands of Sikhs were massacred on the streets of Delhi and elsewhere. Amen. Sir, this genocide was an attack on our constitution. The government of the day miserably failed to protect the lives and property of a minority community. Sir, sadly, 30 years have lapsed, and yet crimes have not found a closure. As ba Baba Sahib Ambedkar said, rights are real only if they are accompanied by remedies. Sir, I sincerely hope that as we celebrate our constitution today, we all should take a pledge to uphold it, not only in letter, but also in spirit. I would urge the government of the day to make it possible that all the right, all the wrongs of the past are now turned to rights. Give the Sikhs justice. Make sure that thousands of Sikh families who lost their loved ones find a closure. Sir, the 1980s and 90s saw Punjab in flames. Extremist forces, which were encouraged by the then ruling party to checkmate the Akalis, got out of hand and wrecked havoc in the state. More than 50,000 innocent lives were lost to mindless terrorism. Punjab's economy was shattered, and it has taken us 20 long years to bring normalcy back to Punjab. However, sir, it is very unfortunate that in order to gain some political advantage, attempts are once again being made in connivance with some fringe elements to yet again destabilize our state. Recently, sir, attacks have been made on the holy Guru Granth Sahib, who the Sikhs consider a living guru. This has deeply hurt the religious sentiment of the Sikhs and those who follow Sikhism. Peace and harmony in the state are again at stake. Sir, I would appeal to all political parties not to play with fire for their short-term political gain. And I end with a quote by Dr. Ambedkar, they cannot make history who forget history. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Gudralji. Now, thank you for us adhering to the time schedule. Now, honorable members, see, you may be aware that already the direction of the honorable chairman, that the names after received after commencement of the discussion will not be accepted. That direction of the chairman is already in force. But however, with the permission of the chairman, for this discussion, being a special discussion, an exemption is being made. And therefore, I am calling some names which were received after commencement of the discussion. But they can only take five minutes and not even a single minute more. So you, you prepare your speech, make it brief so that you conclude in five minutes. So